Hi friends, Tony DeWitt here, Missouri Appellate Attorney and a guy who likes to make the law make sense on YouTube. Here's what we're discussing today. John Wayne is credited with saying that life was hard, but that it was harder when you were stupid. Whatever else John Wayne may have gotten wrong in his life, he certainly nailed that one. Most of what doctors, lawyers, police officers, chaplains, and other service professionals do is necessitated by at least one stupid act, one of those hold-my-beer moments. The other day, someone in the comments section here asked me if I had any videos about First Amendment auditors. And I do, and if, if I can remember, I will link it to this, to this video. Uh, the long and short is that I do have, but I haven't done a lot of work on them because I think a lot of other people do it much better. I'm going to give a shout out to a channel here called Team Skeptic. If you haven't been to Team Skeptic's channel and seen what he does, um, you should probably go. It's a good channel, and I'm sure he would appreciate the subscription. Uh, the long and short is I'm not going to duplicate what he does because he does it so much better than what I could do. But the video that I did do about this several months ago, I guess it's probably been more than a year now, uh, I pointed out the obvious about First Amendment auditors, and that is that the First Amendment doesn't need an auditor. It's there. It protects all of us. It keeps the government from limiting our speech, our freedom of religion, our free exercise of religion, and it protects our right to protect, to, to protest in that we can peacefully protest and we can petition the government for redress of grievances. So today I want to talk about one of the reasons why First Amendment auditors exist. And I think in large part, we can thank YouTube and TikTok for this. So let's take a look real briefly at Chile de Castro's work in this area. Now I'm mentioning him by name because he has come up in a series of other videos. Now he has a channel here on YouTube. I won't mention it because I don't want to see him get the views, frankly. Instead, like I said, I'll mention Team Skeptic, who's hilarious and who spends a fair amount of his channel's bandwidth taking on First Amendment auditors. In fact, he calls them crayon eaters, uh, lead paint samplers. But go to his channel and look at his coverage of Chile. But in the event you don't want to do that, I can pretty much summarize the script of, bul of the bulk of his videos. Here's what he does. He follows or he comes across a police officer stopped doing what cops do. Issue citations, investigate bad drivers, that sort of thing. This is literally what we pay cops to do. We pay them to keep our streets safe. And one of the ways they keep the streets safe is to keep bad drivers and bad cars off the road. So it's okay with me if somebody films a police officer. In fact, that's constitutionally protected. But instead of filming from a reasonable distance, which is constitutionally protected, as I said, Chile gets in close. Now, pretty much every camera phone has a zoom function. He doesn't need to get close. He doesn't need to get in the middle of the traffic stop to actually be able to do something about it, to actually put it on his channel. He doesn't need to get there. But what he does is he gets close enough to make the cops say something to him solely for the purpose of intimidating the cops. That's what he does. That's his shtick. He intimidates the cops. Now, don't take my word for it because that's just my opinion that he intimidates the cops. Go look at, go look at Team Skeptic and, and his review of some of his work and you make a determination on your own. So within seconds of being asked to move back because he's gotten too close to the traffic stop, and you have to remember that although this guy is YouTube famous, most cops don't know who this guy is who's coming up on their traffic stop with a camera. And keep in mind, a lot of this stuff happens in the evening hours when it's dark and you see somebody holding something and you're a cop, you have to wonder if it's not a firearm. 
So it's dangerous to be doing this kind of nonsense anyway. But at any rate, he moves up on the traffic stop, gets in close, and when the cops say something to him, he starts hurling insults at them. In one video, he says, Oh my goodness, somebody's filming the cops. You better call for backup. Well, it might not be a bad idea for the cops to call for backup because he is going to create a scene. And if you wish to get the actual traffic stop done and in the books, you're probably going to have to have somebody else deal with him. But be that as it may, uh, that's what he does. He gets out there and is just outrageous with the police. Now, does he have a right to be out, outrageous? Yeah, you absolutely have a right to hurl insults at the police, but there are certain restrictions on your ability to do that because you can't do that in such a way as to interrupt the police officer in the performance of his duty. Now, Chile's claim is that thousands of people every year are shot by the cops. Well, the problem with his, that is he doesn't understand numbers or statistics, apparently. In most years, the figure is around 1,100 people who wind up getting shot by police officers. Now, you can go to various sources and you can see that from 2013 to 2024, the, or 2023, because that's the last full year, the, the number varies between 900 and 1,200. So let's just use a number of 1,100. Well, let's just use 1,200 because that's the 2023 number. In 2023, a year where liberal sources claimed, in other words, anti-police sources, claimed 1,200 or more deaths were caused by police, the majority of which involved police shootings, only 10 officers were charged as a result of those deaths. So what can we discern from this? That perhaps the other 1,190 were shooting at the police or trying to choke them, or stab them, or hit them with some object. All you have to do is go to the Police Activity Channel to see how a lot of these types of events occur, and there are a lot of them. Last year, in 2023, there were 378 police officers shot. 47 of them died. So, at the outset, when you're talking about justified police shootings, in other words, police shootings where police officers were not charged, of around 1,200. And the population of the country is 331.9 million people. You're talking about 0.00036% of the population. That is not exactly a pandemic of police shootings. But knowing that hundreds of cops are shot and many die in the line of duty every year, you would think someone like Chile would at least be cognizant of the fact that cops wear a giant target on their back. And even if you don't agree with them, you'd recognize that they don't get paid enough to dodge bullets. Nobody does. No, not Chile. From the moment he starts the encounter to the moment he finishes filling, He's tossing out insult after insult and getting closer and closer, and he's basically refusing to allow the cops to do their job. And that's what often gets him arrested, and of course he then gets the opportunity to complain about how unjust and unfair the court system is. But recently, Chile messed with the wrong cop in the wrong state, came in front of the wrong judge. The Nevada cop was investigating a suspended license plate. This rather attractive blonde young woman, he'd pulled over. Her license plate had been suspended. It came up on his reader. He pulled her over to find out what was going on. And Chili came in close and started filming. And of course, when he films, he almost always gets close enough so that the cop has to say something to him. And then he tries to start a dialogue so that the cop can't deal with the person in the traffic stop, he has to deal with Chile and respond to his nonsense. He got way too close, he couldn't keep a civil tongue in his head, and the entire body cam camera footage was what was shown at trial. And the trial was covered by a YouTube channel here called Our Nevada Judges, Inc. If you're enjoying, if you enjoy watching that kind of thing, which is not something you see here a lot, which is sort of low-level municipal 
traffic type offenses, these kinds of offenses. If you enjoy seeing that kind of content, that's a great channel. And, and this particular trial is there for you to see. And as you know, my policy is not to rip off other YouTube, other YouTube videos. Uh, I don't like to do that. I will sometimes include a short snippet of a video, um, unless it's a trial, because in a trial, the, the media order says that it's pooled coverage and anybody can use it. But when Chile De Castro is going out there and filming a traffic stop, that's his footage. I don't take that. When Team Skeptic is doing his thing, I don't take that. They should be entitled to use that footage as they see fit. So I will sort of talk you through what happened in this trial. And I will invite you to go watch the trial on that channel, as I mentioned, Our Nevada Judges, Inc. Now, the judge did several very smart things at the very beginning of the trial. First, she made Chili turn off his phone and give it to the bailiff. He didn't like this, and he resisted in this, and he tried to hand the video to someone who was other than the bailiff, and the bailiff took it from him, and when he did that, Chili called him a pig. Now, do we remember what the first rule of trial work is? Don't honk off the judge. Well, he honked off the judge. The judge told him in no uncertain terms he wasn't going to talk to any of the court staff that way. She made him apologize. She also made him turn out his pockets to demonstrate that he wasn't filming surreptitiously. And she said, I'm not going to appear on your YouTube channel. And he pointed to the people from our Nevada judges and said, you're already going to be on YouTube. And she said, they, you know, they put in a request. That's okay. The next thing she did that was brilliant was refuse to let his standby counsel stand aside. In other words, she was not going to let Chile act as his own lawyer because he had a lawyer, that lawyer was entered, was there, and able to take the case and do it. So she didn't allow him to act as his own lawyer because she knew exactly what would happen. A guy who does what he does at a traffic stop is going to be nearly uncontrollable in a court of law. So she denied that so she could control her courtroom. The state put the cop on the stand, had him lay the foundation for his badge cam video, and then they played the badge cam. It demonstrated in very clear terms that he was interfering in the traffic stop. Now, the cross-examination of the police officer was uninspired, probably because there really wasn't much he could do with the video. So Chile's defense lawyer put him on the stand and started to ask questions about his work as a member of the press. Now, if you think he is a member of the press, more power to you. But he's posting these videos on YouTube for the money. He isn't doing a public service, no matter how much blather about that he spouts. The judge confined his testimony to the facts of the incident, and other than him sneaking in a, a reference to him being a constitutional scholar, no, he has not been to law school, and an expert on the First Amendment, which was patently ridiculous, there really wasn't too much he could do for himself because the badge cam video had already been played. The closing argument from the state was straightforward, that he, you know, essentially uh, violated the law, and the defense closing was equally uninspired, same babble as what appears on Chile's channel, he was entitled to do everything he was entitled to do by the First Amendment, and more importantly, he moved back one or two feet so he wasn't interfering. The judge didn't find that very persuasive. She found him guilty and asked the state for a sentencing recommendation. And the nice young lady who was representing the state stood up and asked for 90 days suspended to run concurrently because there were two charges, interfering and I believe resisting was the other. She asked the defense counsel, and the counsel said, well, we'd be okay with a suspended sentence, but my guy isn't guilty. That I just saved you five minutes of your life. One of the things that courts look to in cases like this when they are sentencing someone is, was the defendant remorseful, and had he learned a lesson? Well, it was obvious that he hadn't learned a lesson when he called the bailiff a pig, and it was also obvious when he basically jumped up and started debating with the judge that it was pretty obvious that he didn't have any remorse in this either. So the judge gave him 90 days in the Clark County Jail on one charge and 90 days on the, on the other charge, sentences to run consecutively. 
In other words, instead of having to run 90 days, he's going to have to be in jail for 180 days, six months. He had to serve out one sentence before he could serve out the other. So counsel for Chile asked, is that sentence suspended? And the judge said, nope, it starts right now. And with that, the bailiffs moved in, handcuffed him, and carted him off to jail. Now, as I said, you do have a constitutional right to film police. Absolutely. You have a constitutional right to be insulting if you find that to be your shtick. Fine. What you can't do is interfere with an investigation or fail to obey a lawful order from a police officer. This isn't rocket science, right? You realize when a cop is telling you to get back, he means business. But a lot of First Amendment auditors, not just Chile de Castro, do this so that they can get arrested. And in fact, that's what the court says in this case. She says he does this so he can get this and put this on YouTube. What's really sad, in my view, is that this will get him tons more video views on his channel, given the number of people who will believe his rant about the cops and think he truly is a constitutional law scholar. That's really sad, but, you know, this is the Dunning-Kruger effect in real time. If you see this and you think Chile is not the bad guy, you probably have your moral compass pointing in the wrong direction. At any rate, that's what I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments, leave them in the comments down below. Please keep them civil. I understand many people will think that I'm picking on First Amendment auditors, and I am, because I think it is a dumb way to spend your time. And I think of all of the content that is on YouTube, it is the least interesting and most repetitive. If you have the opportunity today, do a kindness for someone doesn't have to be a big kindness. Just do something out of the box that's nice for somebody else. You can change the world that way. And then, after you've done that, come back down here to the beach and come catch me next time. If you like this video, here are a few others you might try, and don't forget to subscribe. Have a terrific day, guys.